Welcome to GMAT Math Online Math Prep Videos. In this video, we explain primes and factorization of positive integers. You probably already know that a prime number is a positive integer greater than 1 that is divisible only by 1 and itself. Some simple examples are 2, 3, 5, and 7. But what is prime factorization? And why is it useful? Prime factorization is breaking a number down into a product of all its prime components. For example, the prime factorization of 6 is 2 times 3. Because 6 equals 2 times 3, and both 2 and 3 are prime numbers. The prime factorization of 9 is 3 squared because 3 divides 9 twice. And why is this useful? Well, it's very useful in performing a lot of mathematical operations, like adding fractions, simplifying square roots, and calculating probability. Suppose then that we want to factor a number like 784. How do we do it? You'll soon see when we show you how to factor this number later in the video. First, though, let's go over the basic concepts. There are an infinite number of primes, but it's handy to memorize the first eight. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, and 19. The value of knowing these eight primes is that any positive integer less than 500 is either prime itself or is divisible by one of these eight. This makes it much easier to determine the prime factorization of any number less than or equal to 500. To factor numbers even larger than 500, it's useful to remember a few simple rules with respect to divisibility by 2, 3, and 5. Rule 1. A number is divisible by 2 if it ends in 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. Rule 2. A number is divisible by 5 if it ends in 5 or 0. Rule 3. A number is divisible by 3 if its digits add up to a number divisible by 3. Let's look at a few examples for Rule 3. 141. Its digits add up to 6. That is, 1 plus 4 plus 1 equals 6. So it's divisible by 3, and 141 divided by 3 equals 47. Try this one now. 1,836,400 its digits add up as 1 plus 8 plus 3 plus 6 plus 4 plus 2 plus 3, and that's equal to 27, which is divisible by 3. So this large number is also divisible by 3. In fact, 1,836,423 divided by 3 equals 612,141. Here are three more rules that are useful. Rule 4. A number ends in 0 if it's divisible by both 2 and 5, and so it's divisible by 10. Rule 5. A number is divisible by both 2 and 3 if it's divisible by 6, or vice versa. Rule 6. If the digits of a number sum to a number divisible by 9, then the number itself is divisible by 9. Rules 4 and 5 are pretty obvious, but Rule 6 is not. And Rule 6 is often very valuable. Let's review a previous example. 1,836,423. Its digits add up as 1 plus 8 plus 3 plus 6 plus 4 plus 2 plus 3 which equals 27, which is divisible by 9, so it is also divisible by 9. Thus, 1,836,423 divided by 9 
equals 204,047. Now we can talk about prime factorization. Every integer greater than 1 can be expressed as the product of powers of primes. For example, 12 equals 2 squared times 3. Notice that the number 1 is not used in this factorization because it adds nothing to the meaning. Also, since 2 divides into 12 evenly twice, then the factorization includes 2 squared. It's much easier to see the relationships between integers if we take their prime factorizations. For example, to add two fractions, we compute the least common multiple of their respective denominators. Thus, let's say we want to add 4 45ths and 8 21sts. Then the two denominators are 45 and 21. So, 45 equals 3 squared times 5, and 21 equals 3 times 7. Having the prime factorizations of both numbers, it's easy to see that to get the least common multiple, we just combine the common factors of the two numbers, without repeating any of them. Let's start with 45. 45 equals 3 squared times 5. Now look at the prime factorization of 21. 21 equals 3 times 7. Now 21 has two prime factors, 3 and 7. And one of them, 3, is already in the prime factorization of 45. So we simply append the other factor, 7, to the prime factorization of 45, and we get the least common multiple of 21 and 45. 3 squared times 5 times 7 equals 45 times 7, and that equals 315. Notice that we only have to include the highest power of 3 that is in either of the numbers. That is, in this case we include 3 only twice, not 3 times. Let's look at another problem. Suppose we want to know if a given number is a perfect square. For that to happen, every number in its factorization must have an exponent that's divisible by 2. For example, 36 equals 2 squared times 3 squared. It is a perfect square, because each of the two exponents is 2. We get its square root by dividing each exponent by 2, so the square root is 2 times 3, which equals 6. On the other hand, try 72. 72 equals 2 cubed times 3 squared. 72 is not a perfect square because in its prime factorization, the exponent of 2 is 3, and 3 is not evenly divisible by 2. But if we multiply 72 by 2, then we add 1 to the exponent of 2, and we get 2 to the 4th power times 3 squared, and that equals 2 times 72, which equals 144. We take the square root, then, by dividing each of these two exponents by 2, and we get 2 squared times 3, which equals 12, which is the square root of 144. Here's a harder example. Recall 784 from the beginning of the video. Is 784 a perfect square? We can find out by taking its prime factorization. We see that 784 is divisible by 2, so we keep dividing by 2 until we can't anymore. Each successful division adds a 2 to the prime factorization. So we have 784 divided by 2 equals 392, and the prime factorization at this point is 2. 392 divided by 2 equals 196, and now the prime factorization is 2 squared. 196 divided by 2 equals 98, and the prime factorization is 2 cubed. 98 divided by 2 equals 49, and the prime factorization is 2 to the fourth power. So, 784 equals 2 to the fourth power times 49. Now we factor 49 into 7 times 7, 
and get 784 equals 2 to the fourth power times 7 squared. Now let's see if 784 is a perfect square. Each exponent in its factorization is an even number. So we simply divide these exponents by 2 to get the square root of 784. 2 squared times 7, which equals 4 times 7, and that equals 28. And 28 squared equals 784. We see then that 784 is a perfect square, and that its square root is 28. For more on prime factorization and its uses, see our other videos. And for practice problems and sample tests, go to www.gmatmath.online. And you can get our ebooks GMAT Math Basics, GMAT Math Problem Solving, and GMAT Math Data Sufficiency. Thanks for your interest.